So for the meantime, I am postponing my work on my uh, Firestone A5 that I started recording for, and I am moving on to something a bit different. Um, I got a request from someone I met here recently that he was looking for antique radio and he wanted it to play and look good, and um, I recommended this set that would happen to be in store that would uh, be a good starting point, because you can... Uh, to like an add an auxiliary input to this. This is actually a, uh, a radio phonograph combination set. Uh, Hoffman brand. I haven't checked the model number. The uh, player, let me angle the camera up here. This is a 3345 and 78 RPM uh, with a repeat arm. Now someone has actually been in here before. They replaced the original cartridge with a slightly more modern one in the tone arm there. Flocking on the platter is still in great shape though. Have to see how the mechanical drive is. Those rubber wheels can get dried out and be a bit of a hassle. Hopefully the rubber's in good shape. Overall cabinet's not bad. Um, probably going to consider doing a refinish on it although the front here these decals I want to make sure if I do have to if I do go the, the full route of completely stripping the cabinet I want to make sure I can either cover these and save them or possibly get replacements but that's not important right now the main thing that we want to do is get this up and running now at the end of the day this is still a fairly simple, I think it's either a 5 or 2, uh, 6 tube set. Um, it's got uh, standard AM as well as a shortwave band. Um, I'll probably use the shortwave band as the uh, auxiliary input actually. That would be a good place to inject it. I originally considered going through the phonograph input but that would require an additional switch and because the shortwave band is almost entirely empty simply um, going in through that stage there would probably work out quite well. The uh, tuning knob is a little bit stiff, but the dial does seem to work just fine. I have to check and probably lubricate the tuning condenser. It's actually got a separated volume control so you can keep that low while you're uh, fiddling with the power switch. That way if you shut the set off and then turn it back on, if you uh, are playing the same station you don't have to crank the volume back up again. You can leave it at a set level all the time. And it lets you know when the set is on too if it's not all the way down. And the power switch also doubles as the tone control. Got a fairly good amount there. All that is is a, uh, a simple uh, RC res resistor capacitor filter to either um, block high or low frequency sounds depending on the uh, value of the... This is either using a fixed capacitor and a variable resistor. So it's not very sophisticated, but it, it does work to a degree. So we'll start by pulling the knobs off and getting the chassis out. It uh, actually comes out the bottom. And then we'll take a look and see what we need to do to get it running. This is actually a transformer set, as it turns out, and it's got six volt tubes from what I can see, but I don't think it's anything more complicated than your typical All-American 5 circuit. So let's get on with that. So I've got this flipped over here, and we can actually see got the record changer mechanism underneath here. It's got a uh, power connection that actually plugs into the chassis there to get power from the line cord. The uh, record player in this is actually a voice of music unit, which those are nicely built, good parts documentation. Uh, can't say the same for the rest of the set. The Hoffman uh, radios, unfortunately, are pretty hard to come by on info. In fact, this one is not listed on the Radio Museum website. And I doubt there are a lot of people that have more info on it. However, they did nicely put a uh, tube layout diagram on the bottom here, so I know that it is a six-tube set. It is does have a power transformer. It's got a 6x5 rectifier. Uh, we'll try to be careful with that. Make sure it's one of the X-plate types, so it doesn't short. Or maybe we'll just go the whole replace it with a modern diodes route. And it's got a 6K6 as the output tube. Now what's interesting is they note that the antenna on the diagram is mounted directly to the back of the chassis 
Now my guess is whoever it is that last worked on that didn't like that setup or something and they moved it up here actually. They uh, replaced the wires and moved the antenna. So in order to actually get this whole assembly out of here we're going to need to disconnect the antenna which thankfully simply held on with a wing nut. Somebody was obviously using their head there. Uh, outside of that, nothing really all that complicated about this. It is more than likely the original antenna, however my guess is somebody just didn't like it being on the back the chassis. It might have interfered with the player. So, I'm going to sit there. And then the entire chassis assembly is held in here and here. And it looks like someone went ahead and removed some of the screws and managed to screw up the ones that were still in place. Some people just are not gentle with their stuff, so we'll put a little bit of pressure on this so it can't go anywhere. That there and the wooden base wants to come all the way free but not quite yet so gotta keep going on the screw it would seem careful with it. Okay, yeah, it looks like this thing has had no maintenance work done to it. All of the original capacitors are still in place. The volume control, however, the shaft is different. This is definitely a replacement. However, all of the original wax capacitors are still in here. That one looks pretty crusty. So, go ahead and we'll set the base plate aside for now. And gently lift out. Yeah, so the dial scale is locking that in place. And then we also have the audio connection for the phonograph on a special plug right here, which we need to disconnect. And that means the rest of this can come right out. And there we go. Got that up there. That's pretty simple. And I can't tell, but it almost looks like this has left and right audio. This might actually be a stereo into mono connection, which is uh, kind of neat, actually. And it also appears that the speaker is an electrodynamic model. So, let's get this up on the bench and get the cabinet out of the way. Alright, with the chassis successfully out, we can take a look and see what we're, what we're working with here. Uh, speaker cone's in great shape. It's got a pair of number 47 dial lamps on there. The uh, tuning assemble, like I suspected, is functional, but it needs some cleaning. The uh, tuning condenser in particular need, has some gunk in it that we're going to have to get out of there. I'll probably look at putting the antenna back where it ought to be. I think someone messed a little bit much with that. Cord is broken right here, so I've already got a replacement for that. Not a big deal. Power transformer was replaced at some point with a, a newer one. It looks like it might be a Stancor brand or something along those lines. As near as I can tell, it's got all 6-volt tubes in it. We'll get those out and get those cleaned up. We have a single three-section electrolytic capacitor here for the... Uh, the uh, filtering 
for the high voltage it's got two uh, actually they're all 20 microfarad two are 450 volt one is 25 volt I should have those on hand and uh, the speaker interestingly appears to be an electrodynamic type so you've got the voice coil and then you have the electromagnet to drive that and six tube set 665 rectifier little plug on the back there for the record changer and a special plug in the top for the audio amplifier you know what we're gonna go ahead and remove this this awful power cord so we don't get any ideas about plugging it in there we go I actually know my good cutters are out a lot easier yeah someone just kind of halfway spliced it into there part of the cord is good the rest of it's garbage so we'll deal with that give the chassis a bit of a cleaning I probably won't go super super detailed and try polishing anything it's still got the stickers on it and don't want to wind up removing those and let's flip her over again and see what all we're going to need for this and if I can gently rest it against the dial here or against the intermediate frequency transformers there we go Turn the camera around so it's a very thin chassis, not a lot of depth to it. So I can't go crazy with putting uh, electrolytics in clumps or anything. But if I had to guess, oh yeah, that's why you've got these six additional contacts because you've got both the audio from the radio and the audio from the uh, Phonograph that have got to go in there. So what they've actually done is this is for the switch that, that uh, goes between those two. So volume control, power and tone. This is our band selector here for shortwave. I would like to find the schematic for this thing if I could, because honestly, it'd be nice to nice to know how that's actually wired. Some resistors that are probably need to go. Um, this is a Mallory replacement capacitor here. It feels a little on the uh, waxy and sticky side. Plast cap. Okay, it's plastic, but that plastic is uh, getting a little nasty after all these years, so I don't know. all of that's going to go. I am a bit low on the 0.05 capacitor, so I may have to place an order for that. This nuts is a little bit loose. But on the whole, everything here looks pretty good. So I think what we'll start doing is I will check my stocks of little electrolytic capacitors and then start uh, getting all these other components together and then we'll uh, get going on the rewiring and the uh, parts replacement. <laughs>